I'm a Medium, Ask Me How was not filmed in front of a live studio audience. We best friends, but we love talking about dead people. We're going to laugh and we'll cry. Well, Dana's going to cry a little bit. We got love bombs all over the place. And let's not act like Matt isn't going to cry a little bit. But we're also going to cuss. So if that doesn't resonate, turn the fuck around. Yeah, we're going to drop some fuck bombs. But we also want to share our experiences and knowledge about mediumship. So sit down, get comfortable, and remember. You are the light of 100,000 suns. Are the light. And enjoy. I'm a medium. Ask me how. Welcome back. We made it to episode two. Dana, I had so much fun in episode one. I was like, let's do another. <laughs> let's do another. Well, that's a good thing if we're going to do a podcast to want to do another one. But exactly. I'm so excited. This it's is going to so be exciting. a good one. I think this is going to be like one that it's for the ages because this one is all about hauntings and the Stanley Hotel. Like we went to the Stanley Hotel and I think I, when we were talking, I think I said before my trip out there a couple of weeks ago, I was like, Dana, I want to go see the Stanley Hotel. And we looked, I think we tried to book a a reservation there and it was (laughs) quite expensive. (laughs) Yeah, I think it was the cowboy room or something like that. And uh, we had called and I think if I if I remember correctly, like there's like if you go on their website, there's like four or so rooms that are Mm -hmm. haunted. And I was like, we'll take one of the haunted rooms. And it was like, well, we've got the cowboy room available. And we're like, cool. Mm -hmm. And I think it was six hundred dollars. And we went, "Mm, not Mm. tonight. For a night, for a night. I mean, maybe they'll invite us back and we won't have to pay that much. <clears throat> Stanley Hotel, we're here for you if you need us. <laughs> <clears throat> Subtle but hint. What, but what is the um, what is the cowboy room? Because I don't think the viewers understand what the cowboy room is. So if you want to tell them like the backstory about like what the cowboy room is. Well, from what I recall, and this is what the receptionist told me, right? Mm -hmm. I think the receptionist said something to the extent of like, there's a cowboy that comes that has been seen at the edge of the bed that will sometimes appear to the people staying in the room. And to, if you're a lady that sometimes they'll give you, the cowboy will come kiss you on the cheek. Ooh, And, and that's, that's kind of the extent of the cowboy room experience. So we already had like a predisposition about what the story of the hotel is just by not even going there. Yeah. And I and I think like I, I learned a lot going through the Stanley Hotel. I think we arrived there. It was a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous Essex Park. Let's just take like a moment and hold space for that view because oh. It's so beautiful it's up there. Oh, so, so beautiful. And then um, we ended up arriving there. And we got out of the car and we just approached it and we didn't really know a lot about the Stanley Hotel. I think I learned a lot about the history just based on the tour that we ended up taking beforehand. But uh, what were your first impressions about the Stanley Hotel from a psychic medium standpoint? I mean, definitely you felt energy there. Like it's Mm -hmm. definitely, um, you could feel as you, there's different buildings of the hotel. Like there's different sections of the hotel that you walk through and Mm -hmm. you could definitely feel as you walk through different areas, different feelings in your body. Um, We talk, if you're new to mediumship, Matt and I talk a lot about feeling as the language of spirit. So we kind of use our bodies as antennas, if you will, for receiving information, um, spiritual information. And you could definitely feel different things in your body as you walk through different areas of the hotel. Um, so that was, that was definitely present in that hotel, hundred percent. It was my first um, walk through as a medium, like an evidential medium. Cause I mean, I normally read people right? Mm -hmm. So shifting my abilities, and it was a good exercise for myself, like I felt like it was alive in a weird way. I can, I can clearly say that it felt alive. It had a lot of energy to it. 
you could feel the history, not only just viewing it, but it felt like it had a little buzz to it that Mm -hmm. like a normal place wouldn't. I know that Stephen King wrote The Shining there or got inspired by The Shining or however he went about doing it. But you could feel that even that would have an undercurrent there, right? The the story of Stephen King would have an undercurrent because it's everywhere. It's everywhere there. Like any place you turn, you see Hollywood, like a couple other movies have been filmed there. And you just felt it. Like you felt that this place was special and it had a history and it was gorgeous. It was such a gorgeous building. Oh, it's beautiful. And the views and the mountains and all of that. And um, so it's definitely a special place. Um, mm-hmm. What I did enjoy and and both both Matthew and I can say that we are we are evidential, meaning that we like to be proven. Like we mm-hmm. want to have see proof, 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 proof. And I would also just call myself, and I don't want to speak for Matt, but like I am a skeptic. I want to be proven. I want to like, I want to know. I don't, I want to make sure that I'm not making stuff up. And whether that was in my own development or whatever, like I want proof. I don't want somebody to just say this is haunted or this has this activity or that activity. Like I want proof. Um, so we went in there with very non-biased. Um, we purposely, I think the most we knew walking going in there is kind of the chitter chatter of other people saying this is a haunted hotel. Um, the the most that we went and did before we got up there is we tried to book the the cowboy room. We went mm, six hundred is too much. Mm-hmm. We heard the story about the the cowboy. We knew the stories about The Shining because everybody knows The Shining and the Stanley Hotel. But beyond that, we didn't know any of the stories or any of the ghost stories or anything like that. Um, so we really went in there with like not knowing anything and a very unbiased viewpoint. And we just kind of went in there with an open heart and open mind and like, let's just see what we see and feel what Mm -hmm. we feel. Um, And then we had a a tour, a ghost tour uh, scheduled through the hotel uh, that evening. Yes. And I think you hit the nail on the head with something where we want to go in with a sense of neutrality, right? So the more information that's fed to us, the more our active mind or the part of our brain that wants to fill in like the gaps of everything and create those elaborate like daydreams and all that stuff, it doesn't help our medium tip, right? So we would go in not knowing anything about the location, anything about the people involved in the actual the history of the building because it gives us a chance to write the story ourselves through the spirit communication and the evidence that rolls through like i am dana you know me i think most of the people on tiktok know that me like i like to just base everything in science right and evidence because that we can speak to and i know i watch a lot of those shows on like <clears throat> like a major channel that runs a lot of like ghost shows and I always leave as an evidential medium. I'm I get I get so fucking angry. I'm not gonna lie. I get very irritated because they play off of each other, right? Yeah. So like once one person knows, and like uh, like what the pattern that I see is like when the investigators arrive to the building, you always have one person explaining to the other investigators the history of the building the spirits that are involved in it. There's always the lady in gray and she's always standing at the window looking for her last lover. Mm-hmm. And like, but it plays the history and it's very, very repeating. And then by the time they exit whatever building that they're in, they're always like, this place is evil. Well, if it was evil, then it would kill you, right? It, it, you wouldn't walk out of there unscathed, right? And, and I think that's our imagination that kind of creeps in, in my experience and my truth, and I can only speak for my truth and not necessarily anybody else's, is that our brain is going to want to associate any bad experience to the story that you're told, and you're just building on what somebody else is saying, but not going by with your own experience. What I find about haunted locations, and, and I think when I went with you, that was my first major like investigation, but I've been to haunted locations as a medium, but I've never like, what am I going to get? And I've got somebody else that I can cooperate later on at a, at a different date. And 
yeah, you're going to be uncomfortable in some spots because you don't know what you're picking up on that can be validated through evidence, right? So your brain's going to want to be like, get out. And you're going to be like, okay, that was my brain, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm uncomfortable in this building that is rotting and it doesn't feel warm and welcoming and it doesn't feel like it has people in it. And I think that's the difference between like an abandoned building and the Stanley Hotel is that there's a lot of people in this building that are currently living and they also have their own energy and their own, like they were scaring each other. Yes. Like, like we heard a couple of times of being like, who's that? Boo. And they were like hiding behind corners and scaring each other. And that is energy. Mm -hmm. That's going to layer on to whatever already is there. Right. Um, So did you, did you feel that as well, Dana? Like it was, it was like alive. Yeah. And, and honestly, like parsing out, like, what is the energy of the building? What is the spirit energy? And what is the human energy in the space Mm -hmm. was there, there was a lot to parse through there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would agree, like sitting there and being able to sit with another medium and parse some of that out was, was very beneficial, at least for me. Um, I do want to get to the point where we talk about where you ripped your shirt off and started yelling at the ghosts. Oh, well, you know, I, I, I really, really wanted to leave a good impression for that cowboy. Cause I'm like, look, you're only in a girl's girl and honey, look at this. And I just ripped it off, you know, but uh, getting back to like, <laughs> you just want to skip over <laughs> I gotta skip, I gotta skip over it. Cause look, no. like, this, this is not a tight temple. <laughs> it's not a tight temple. I got to do a couple crunches before I can rip my shirt off for a ghost. But, but I, I want to talk about the human element in that, in wanting to build a story because there was definitely that, um, mm-hmm. you know, Matt and I will get into a little bit of like what we found prior to the ghost tour, but there was this constant, like, we want to spin yarn and we want to spin ghost stories and we're here to scare you. And we're Mm going to turn off the lights and make you. And, and so, and even the, the, the tour guide was like, okay, do you feel and woo, woo, woo. And I'm going to say, we caught the, the tour guide in a couple of lies. We did. Uh, <laughs> Can I just do this? Like every time we say like uh, haunted, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, because it's really is. I, and, and we got to remember, we have to remember as cores humans, we love to be fucking scared. Mm-hmm. As much as we don't like it, we love it. So like, I do want to hold space for people that actually believe it's haunted, right? And that actually believe that. But as paranormal investigators going with a tour guide or not paranormal medium investigators going on a tour guide, we paid attention to everything that was said, mm-hmm. everything. I was like, I'm taking note of that. <laughs> I'm taking note of this, <laughs> right? So like we were more, more astute to the things that were going on around us and what was being said, I think after that. But let's let's fast forward a little bit, Dana. So we ended up going into that, like, I don't know if it was like a billiards or a gaming room or like a common sitting area. And we made sure that we stayed separate. So like if Dana went somewhere, I wasn't standing right on top of Dana. I wanted Dana to have some space. So if she got anything, I couldn't hear it. If she wrote something down, I couldn't see it. So that way, when we corroborated our stories or we got our evidence, we could be like, hey, I got this one, you got. So you had gone and you sat over on this chair. And then Mm -hmm. I went into this little like bench nook and we were just sitting there and we're looking at you. And we closed our eyes and we felt the energy. Mm-hmm. And and you, what did you get in that room? Well, I kept on feeling poker games or like game tables, like gambling mm-hmm. in that room. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, also something about an elevator. Mm-hmm. I did as well. So I didn't just necessarily get the gambling part, but I, I felt an elevator, but I saw a specific elevator in, in particular that I needed to address. Now we had not seen much of that hotel at that point. And I got an elevator, but the elevator had the arrow that would count floors as you had gone back up and gone back down. And I said to Dana across the room, I'm like, I'm picking up an elevator. And Dana goes, I think at the same time you said elevator. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand you. And I was like, okay, we could get closer. And so I said, this is what I'm seeing. And I need, I'm drawn to some elevator with that thing. So then we had gone out of the room and back into the main common area. And we saw an elevator and no dice on that arrow. Yeah. 
Yeah, it didn't I have was, like the thing that you were talking about. I was, but we were like elevator. Okay, that's maybe it. Maybe it changed. Maybe and they to, did some renovation. And to be fair, we didn't know that there was another building. We literally, mm-hmm. we were just like going in green. We're like, we'll just go in this building. And we thought, as far as we knew, like that was the main building of the hotel. We really didn't know where we were. Oh, a hundred percent. I thought that that was it. I didn't even realize that there was a separate section, like another entryway into it. And then we ended up outside in the court. And then we stumbled across the women's side. And then we went in. Mm-hmm. And it was very, it's a very gorgeous hotel. It's very spacious. They have an awesome, amazing, like old car in their women's lobby. And then we look to the right and there's an elevator. With the little dial. With the little dial. And then Dana was very smooth. <laughs> she went <Boop>. up. <laughs> <laughs> And we went, we went up and, or we got in the elevator and, um, this, this guy was like, or I intuitively pressed four. Mm-hmm. I just, I just picked a, a floor number and and the guy looked at Matt and I and said, Ooh, you guys picked the spooky floor or the haunted floor. And we we're like, mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm, yep. We sure are. Oh yeah. And then we get off the elevator and you can immediately feel a shift. Like I felt the shift in energy per floor that we went on. I think we only hit a, a couple of floors. I don't think we mm-hmm. go on every single one of them, but I think we at least hit two and then we hit four. Mm-hmm. And then we had gone down and skipped three because I think three is the, like mostly where they put guests. So I was like, mm, I'm gonna go there. And four felt different. Like, what did you feel about four? I'm so curious. Yeah. Well, no, you definitely felt something about four and you felt a heaviness, I guess would be the way that I would say it. You just felt like a, like I felt things move a little bit slower, mm-hmm. like a sluggishness when you, mm-hmm. when you hit, Four. um is it just the, it, the energy felt thicker I think they named the rooms on four per and if I can memory serves me because it's been a couple of weeks since we've been there is something about like the Colorado room like you go up there's like a Colorado room there's like blah 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 blah, blah. and then we were passing rooms and I think each room had its own vibration that had come out of the room and so mm-hmm. like you were picking up the different rooms and then we came to this little hallway that had two benches Mm -hmm. and so you sat I think it was near room 420 yeah and you had sat in front of me and we just decided to open up we're like okay here's a good spot let's open up let's see what we get and tell them what you what you were getting so I I picked up a man um definitely with like facial hair and I um kept on picking up like coming in April or May like coming in April Mm -hmm. like it was a big deal. And I definitely felt as though he, he ran the place. Um, very, I I wish I had my notes in front of me. That would have been good podcast planning. Um, but I had a whole list of notes about him, um, very into his shoes. I was feeling how he would sit. Um, and I do feel as though he would have stayed up there. Um, but he was definitely in charge and running. And then I felt as though he came from the East Coast and would come to to Estes for some mm-hmm. other things. I had to I have to think about it. It's it's been a hot minute. So I'm gonna give you grace for not getting everything. It's fine. <laughs> I'll beat you up later for it. <laughs> um, for me, I ended up getting a female and she felt German. Like she felt like she did not speak much English, but one thing that I felt about her is that she would be curious, just kind of being like observant, like I'm watching. And I sat there and I drew a little photo of her and I think we can just put it in the show notes and hopefully upload it if it works. But if not, you know what, that's fine, whatever. Um, But she felt calm. She didn't feel angry. She felt inquisitive. I think I got a couple dates and a couple things. Um, additional to her but when the group because we're not the only one that's walking around those hallways let's be honest I felt her move away from me Mm -hmm. and move down the hallway so she didn't I didn't step away from her she didn't step away she just was like who's somebody else and she had left and I think at that point we felt really good but one thing I did pick up on that I really really wanted to talk about was a fire Mm -hmm. I needed to talk about a fire and that would have been something that would have been really notable really like I'm feeling like it maybe would have been between 420 
you know, or something to do with wiring. Um, but as mediums, we're never going to be hundred percent accurate. So I was completely cool with it. And my job is just to give what I get. That's it. Mm-hmm. Job's done. Clock it out. And then we had gone downstairs and then we went by this like cave entrance, like we were in the main lobby and the main floor. Mm-hmm. And we felt really weird in that particular corner right next to that door into the cave system. It was like, it, but it was like by a thing that said cashier or something. Mm-hmm. And you could feel as you walk closer to it, you could feel it building. Mm-hmm. And as you walked away. And so we played around with that energy a little bit, like walking away from it and and into it and out of it. And it was consistent in that spot. It felt thick. Like it felt very thick and heavy. It didn't feel scary. It just felt like something's different right here. Like right here, something's different. And I was like, damn, this is weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I kept saying to you, like, it feels weird here. I mean, you were mm-hmm. like, no, stand right here. And like, yeah. You kept shifting me around. And then I think we had gone live on TikTok and mm-hmm. we watched a couple of friends read and then it was time for a tour. So I'm going to let you talk about the beginning of the tour because you, it's what your first thoughts were. <laughs> yeah. the I mean, it was interesting. You know, it was, um, they, they kind of take you, um, well, the first place they take you is into the opera house. It was the opera house or like where they, mm-hmm. where they do things um, like there's, they had, they do concerts and, and things like that in there. Um, and they kind of sit you down and they say, this is so-and-so the, the Mr. Stanley, I think yeah. picture and Mrs. Stanley's well, picture. And, um, we'll call him Mr. and Mrs. Stanley. I, I don't know if that's her real name. <laughs> he, it seems may, accurate, right? Mr. Stanley, Mr. Stanley, Mrs. Stanley. Um, and it was like, uh, here's, there's a little boy that runs up on the stage. This was their son. And they just kind of give you all of this, this information. There's, there's this area up top and you're, you're going to see some ghosts up there. I personally did not feel anything in that space. Um, Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Matt and I kind of walked around there a little bit and it was just like, okay. Can we take a moment for the tour guide though? Can we hold space for her? Cause she's like watching everybody and everyone. It's so cool. I mean, that they were just that into it. Right. And they were going around and they're taking pictures and they're being little paranormal investigators. It was so adorable. And here's me and Dana off to the side being like, <laughs> like we're whispering to each other. And the, the tour guide's starting to notice that like something ain't right with the kid in the hat and the lady with the blonde hair. <laughs> I call myself a kid. I don't know. But the only thing that I saw that I can't prove is, you know, near the stage, there's two like entryways and then one entryway on the right is like a downstairs. Mm-hmm. I saw a dark shadow move from one way to another, but I can't prove anything. But I noticed that like I felt like something we're going there. Like mm-hmm. that's the only thing that I felt. The room felt really beautiful. It felt really light and airy. Like it's gorgeous. They don't let you on the stage because they're preserving the stage. So we didn't get a chance to touch every single spot. And then you were like, do you want to go up in that balcony? Like it's a personal balcony. I'm like, no, there's nothing here. I'm I'm good. I didn't feel drawn there. And I don't think you did either. And then we had started to go downstairs. Yeah. There's a downstairs area and, um, I definitely started to feel stuff as we moved downstairs. And mm-hmm. what's interesting is they move you down into this into this room. And of course they turn off the lights. But what's interesting is I wasn't really feeling anything in that room that they lock mm-hmm. you in. I was feeling things in the hallway right outside of that room. And I felt um, an impatient man. And if I'm, if I, if I'm honest, like he was like, fucking, fucking shit, like really, (laughs) like really annoyed and like just pacing the halls and just like really impatient and like really like, Mm -hmm. and not dangerous or anything, but just not a pleasant energy. Yeah. Um, and that's really what I felt. Um, there was like a, I felt like a closet or whatever that was open in that room. In that, 
in that side room that they first brought us into and they said it was like little annie's little annie's room i don't lucy. even know it was lucy little, little lucy it's always so lucy yeah and we did we felt but but i didn't feel anything bad i didn't mm-hmm. feel i didn't even feel heaviness i was just like huh there's there's a hole um but she she told this whole story about this little girl named Lucy and this and that about Lucy, Lucy, Lucy in this room. I didn't feel Lucy. Well, they kept saying to, about Lucy that there's no record of her. Mm-hmm. There's no record of her. But there was this closet room when we had first walked in. And I was immediately drawn there. Like I was like, first stop closet. <laughs> And I felt drawn there and I felt like it was an energy coming out of that closet that would not make me feel comfortable to be around. I wasn't scared and the lights were completely off, but just I let my mind wander and I knew I was uncomfortable with this closet, meaning something about it. Um, And I felt like Kevin, like I wanted to talk about like this Kevin, like, and I felt like it was recent, but I felt uncomfortable by it. But the hallway, I felt like energy moving and I did feel kind of viewed, stared at. If, I, if I'm if i being fully transparent, I felt stared at. And I kept looking back and you're like, go down and take a picture or go down there. Because there was a room across from the one that we started that I felt really, really drawn to. And I should have done it, but that tour guide yeah. was watching me and you like a hawk because yeah. we were not acting normal <laughs> compared to everybody else. And she goes, she finally goes, what are you guys doing? you guys okay and we're like we're we're two psychic mediums and she was like i've never had one of those on my tour before (laughs) she lit up she got real excited oh she got really excited and then we moved outside and that's when we heard about where where we got a little bit bit of validation on the gentleman that i was feeling Mm -hmm. except the yarn that she spun on that gentleman was that he was a demon and that he was like this evil thing that attacks people. And I was like, no, nah, he's just a grumpy, it's just a grumpy energy. Um, now, I, I can't remember if she had said that to the whole group or she just said that to us because at that point we were like, this is what we doing, right? And it's hard with, with Hollywood, right? Because people, a lot, a lot of the time view us as like, I see dead people and I'm going to say it's a windigo outside your bedroom door is sucking your face off. And I mm-hmm. haven't experienced any of that in my time as a medium. So it's really hard for like the general public that if they don't know that we're psychic mediums, that we're evidential psychic mediums. And a lot of our beliefs kind of root from validation and experience and not like a religious point of view. So I get it and I'm holding space for her. The being like, okay. But when she said demon, I looked at you and I was like, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, are you sure it's not, his name isn't Damon? <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing is too, is like, I didn't feel, the other thing that we've got to talk about here is, did I feel as though I was having like this true medium mystic experience with these with these energies, right? Right. Was I feeling, was this a gentleman that would have been like a maintenance man that worked down there that walked those halls back and forth. And I'm just feeling residual energy of this gentleman walking Mm -hmm. back and forth. And I'm psychically picking up on that. Cause I wasn't feeling, we talk about, and Matt and I will get into this in our podcast, but I wasn't feeling like the power build as I'm feeling into him. Um, It definitely felt hollow and, and whatever, but I could definitely see if like somebody didn't know what this was, like how it could feel intimidating or how you might feel some sort of way about it. But I was not intimidated by him. I was just like, he's grumpy and he walks back and forth on that hallway and he cusses Mm. a lot. Um, But if you were the story that she told the group was that, he, somebody would like was locking up down there and he attacked them and like locked them in. And like, there was a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I think his he, name was Dennis or something. Yeah. I don't know. 
yeah, that was good. That was good. It's actually Dennis. Yeah. But it felt like he was rushed up on, and then he got an inch from his face and then disappeared. Now I can't invalidate somebody's experience, but I can tell you, I did feel movement of energy there. So, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe that's validatable to his story, but I didn't feel an intelligent presence there. I just mm-hmm. felt the rush of energy where you felt it was a male and you were picking up things. In the meantime, we're not talking. So I want to preface that we were not cooperating stories until the very end. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or if we left a room, um, one thing I can tell you that I found really difficult during that tour was to sit with myself in that room and then have a story fed back to me. I really, really, really wish that we could have walked it before, gathered information, and then took the tour to get validation. Yeah. But I understand it's a it's a money making business is of what they're doing. Yeah. But even at that, you know, it was it was interesting. Like I said, you know, there there's they spent she spent like 10 minutes talking about a girl named Lucy. Mm-hmm. And Matt and I were like, we don't feel any Lucy here, you know, like we, we definitely yeah. did not feel any of that. Um, but definitely both felt hit, felt that, yeah. that energy in the hallway, mm-hmm. which was validated. Um, you know, we, she waited and, you know, I, I had told Matt after we got out of Lucy's room, I was like, this is what I felt. I felt this male presence, blah, 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 blah. We walked out of that opera house or whatever. And then she's like, now that we're out of there, I, I can tell you guys about Dennis. And so it was validated well after that, the Dennis experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was cool. Like there were points in that, like in, in this whole experience with Matt and I, that things were validated after we got them. So it wasn't yes. always, but it was frustrating. I, I get what you're saying. Where you're like, oh, I, re- I wish I could have just taken my time and like sat there for at least a long period of time by by ourselves and just wrote down everything, you know, but we pivot, we dance the way that we need to dance. So then we had gone to where the car, car uh, the car is parked out the main male entrance. Was it the male entrance at that point? No, it's a, the women's the, entrance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they're talking about the maid. And they went into a little bit with Stephen King, but they talked about how something to do with the electrical had gone out, so they had to revert back to the gas lamps, and the maid had to go light them. And she, I think from the story, from what I remember, is that she put the gas on full, <laughs> and put her hand in there with the match, and it exploded. And she had fallen a couple of floors, but there was a fire, and that the only thing that saved her life, and that's validation, was her bone corset. And they offered her a job at the Stanley, like forever or room or something. They gave her some like, hey, don't sue us, girl. (laughs) (laughs) You fell down two flights of stairs with your lap here. Take this, here's money. But she, I guess, denied it all. And then when she died, the day that she died, she was a ghost and she clocked in and she continues to haunt room 217 or 212. Yeah, I think it was 217. I think it's the 217 room, yeah. And the big part of the story of that whole thing is when Jim Carrey had filmed his movie there, like you guess for, he rented this room, they kicked the guest out that was originally doing it and he had an experience and he's in his underwear refusing to come back. And if you ask him about it, he'll walk away from you. And the whole time I'm looking at data being like rational human Matt is like, Nothing happened. And that's the reason why he walks away because he's probably like sick of tired of fucking hearing this question. If I'm yeah, honest exactly. with you, because I would be. Because mm-hmm. not only did they paint him like scared, they put him in his underwear running out of a room. Mm-hmm. Not really like the best PR, right? So we end up going into the cave. Mm-hmm. And she she's showing photos of like ghosts on the phone. And we didn't really pay attention to that. And then we get in the cave. Dana. where there's apparently thousands of ghosts that's that's the billing that this mm-hmm. cave is that you get into this cave and there's thousands of ghosts now i have to tell you i would have loved to like get a cot or a bed oh. this was like the most tranquil and relaxing place i've ever been it was so grounding in there it felt so good and what's cool about this cave is they have like cave walls that come up but they had built the stanley hotel over trunks of trees that are still in that rock in there so it feels very like homey and earthy it's a basement it's a a basement 
And she said that this cave system had all been connected. And then when they had built the McDonald's and the restaurants below that they used dynamite and there was a cave in. Which so is that, going back to the, the closet the, in the opera house was the validation that Matt was feeling with the cave in. Correct. But it would have been connected to that cave system that they had used as like underground tunnels to get from one to another. I, I didn't feel, I, you know what? I felt like it should have felt like a, like a Dave Matthews concert <laughs> where it's just a lot of people. You know what it felt like? My high school play. <laughs> like two people show up. It didn't feel very crowded at all. It no. felt very tranquil. It was, it was, they turned off all the lights in this little cave and they're like, Ooh, it's very spooky in here. And it's like, this is like, Matt and I are like, can we stay in here for like hours? Because this I, is like the most- this room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want the $600 room with the hot cowboy. I want this room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I want the hot cowboy. Don't get me wrong. But I want to stay we in all? this room. <laughs> howdy, 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 howdy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> so we end up going out and- this is where I started to disbelieve what she was saying, because when we were in that room, our guide said, well, when I've had psychic mediums and psychics in this room, they pick up a lot. And I'm like, bitch, you just told me that you didn't have any psychic mediums in your, in your tour, right? So like, I understand that they have a script that they've got to memorize and they've got to say, and it's probably part of it, but it's sending mixed signals, <laughs> mixed signals, and I'm paying attention. I'm watching you. I'm yeah. watching you. We're and so then we exit the room and then we pull her aside. We waited patiently and respectfully. Yeah. Make sure that if you take this tour, you tip the person that you end up having the tour guide because that they, they live off that money. Absolutely. And we should note that that cashier spot, that spot where Matt and I mm -hmm. felt really heavy was right outside that door. Yes. Into the cave. Yes. So we actually finished full circle. Like it was kind of cool. It was really, really awesome. So we pull her aside and we're like, Hey, like what happened right here? Like What happened right here? And so what they had said is they were like, well, this, this is where psychic, uh, psychic readings happened. Well, and they said, and I said, no, 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 no. Before that. And she's like, well, actually this is where the actual cave was. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. the cave system that they take you in is not really the cave system where we were feeling that heavy energy is actually the cave system. So do you think like, just kind of like looking back, do you think that cashier desk thing was never really originally there and they ended up putting it there to block that off to make it seem fancy mm -hmm. or they might've used it like way back when to like Maybe. take tickets for the tour. Cause that desk looked awfully new that we booked at. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but she was like, and I don't know how much knowledge she had, but she was <laughs> like, no, this is like the actual, she said, this is like the actual, where the actual cave was. Mm -hmm. So there was, it was just very interesting, but, um, so we got that cool validation. Um, mm -hmm. but then we went, um, then they have like, we left that area and then they have pictures like historic pictures. And we saw um, a picture of a gentleman that looked a lot like the guy I was picking up when we went up to the fourth floor. And yeah. what we what we found out was, so the Stanley Hotel used to be a seasonal hotel and would open up in the April of every year. And so the April that I was picking up and him coming in from the East Coast, which was Massachusetts, which Matthew didn't mention that he picked up, but he did pick up Massachusetts. I did. I kept hearing Leicester. Like Leicester, Leicester, Leicester. And I'm like, why the fuck am I hearing Leicester? I'm from Massachusetts. It's got to be my brain. So I actually pushed the evidence aside because I was like, well, it didn't give what I got. I questioned it and interpreted it. Right. And then we ended up seeing on the thing, he was from Massachusetts. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> I quit. <laughs> but, but, I, you know, and I had said this person came from the East Coast to Colorado. Mm hmm. And every April is when they would open up the hotel because it's only a summer hotel. Mm -hmm. It used to only be a seasonal summer hotel. And so, and then we got to see a picture of him and he looked like what I had described in my notes. Um, so I feel that that's who I was tapped into when I was up on the fourth floor. Well, you also got the letter C for him. 
And then there was a C in his name. Yeah. So yeah. awesome validations. And then we went outside and that was the end of our little jaunt in the Stanley Hotel. And I think uh, like, what were your biggest takeaways from that entire experience at the Stanley Hotel? Well, it more than anything, it was fun. It was mm-hmm. just, it was a fun experience of, um, of, of play. It was playful, right? Like it was, yeah. first off, like it, I never felt like I was in danger or anything mm-hmm. like that. It was never scary. It was just, getting to play with my best friend and, mm-hmm. and just seeing what we saw, like there was no expectation or anything like that. Um, if we didn't pick up anything, no big deal, but the fact that you and I both got validations and were able to pick up things that were later validated were, was really cool. And it just ended up being a fun experience. I think as a takeaway, I think places just they hold energy any we're all energy right Mm -hmm. so places are going to hold energy and when there's so much history in a spot um it's going to hold that energy um for me i think as a takeaway and i think i think it re re um re-hit everything that i already believed about haunted spaces or haunted spaces quotation marks is that you're just feeling the energy of the place. Like there's nothing stuck there. There's nothing Mm -hmm. evil there, but you're feeling the energy of what happened in that space. Um, There's residual energy. If you felt that somebody, if there was somebody that had a big personality that walked up and down a hallway 50,000 times, you're going to pick up on that if you're sensitive. Um, If you, if there's a lot of people that come to a spot and they're feeding into the energy of that spot, you're going to be feeling into the energy of that. Cause there was a lot of that. A lot of people yes. specifically go to the Stanley for this experience. Right. So they're feeding into that. Um, but more than anything, it was just a lot of fun. I think we also need to understand that the Stanley hotel itself has its own unique history. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people look at like the shining, which was by Stephen King and they incorporate that movie's history into the history of the Stanley itself and therefore we manifest this elaborate detail and we want that scary experience like they would have at the Stanley so it's gonna have its own mythos mythos thank you I'm I can't speak (laughs) I can talk to dead people, can't use my words. Uh, But the mythos about that is going to always have Stanley Kubrick's The Shining ever so tightly woven into that, that we've got to learn to go into the Stanley with a lot more sense of neutrality if we investigate that um, ever again. I'm pretty sure that now they they know we wandered around their halls are going to be like, no, 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 you're not from there. But I think that it's just, we need to go with the sense of neutrality and we need to make sure that we're taking out, well, what is the shining? What is the Stanley? And what is the truth, right? So it was a very beautiful experience to go there with my best friend and just venture and try something new and not be scared. I know I like when the dark started to descend Estes Park because it does get darker there quicker because you're in the actual physical mountains. The vibe did change a little bit, but it was more of like soft because everyone started to go home. Mm -hmm. So therefore there wasn't all that live energy and excitement around being at the Stanley and it just started to get quiet. So I would be interested in doing a night walk in the Stanley Hotel at another day with you. Yeah. Yeah. When you part two. Part two. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely go back and maybe we'll do hot cowboy room Ooh. when you come back. I wonder if I wear like Stetson and a pair of boots that I'd get a cast. Like, <laughs> like we'll do hot or not. Like who's hot or not. Like, hot or who's, not. <laughs> like, who's hot or mad or I, like who gets kissed at night. Mad yeah. Or I? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we know the answer. <laughs> It's just which door, which way his door swings. We just can't bring Cody with us. <laughs> Get all the kisses. Our friend Cody is the, the cute one. So, um, well, Dana, that was the Stanley Hotel. That was that the was Stanley it. Hotel. And I think in, in a takeaway, 
of, of anything to bring forward from, from all of this is, is the importance of neutrality and whatever yeah. you're doing with the paranormal world is just coming forward with a, with a state of neutrality. Awesome. Well, I love you all. You're in our hearts. And for me and Dana, you're a little light of a thousand suns. Love you. <laughs> Bye. See you. Bye.